Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Mick Jagger. So Michael Philip Jagger is an English singer and songwriter, the lead singer, and one of the founder members of the Rolling Stones. Jagger's career has spanned over 55 years, and he has been described as one of the most popular and influential front men in the history of rock and roll. Jagger's distinctive voice and performance, along with Keith Richards' guitar style, have been a trademark of the Rolling Stones throughout the career of the band. Jagger gained press notoriety for his admitted drug use and romantic involvements, and was often portrayed as a performance and Ned Kelly, to mixed reception. In 1985, he released his first solo album, SHE's The Boss. In early 2009, Jagger joined the electric supergroup Super Heavy. In 1989 he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and in 2004 into the UK Music Hall of Fame with the Rolling Stones. In 2003, he was knighted for his services to popular music. 1943-1961 Early Life Michael Philip Jagger was born into a middle-class family in Dartford, Kent. His father, Basil Fanshaw, Joe, Jagger, and grandfather, David Ernest Jagger, were both teachers. His mother, Eva Ensley Mary, born in Sydney, Australia, of English descent, was a hairdresser and an active member of the Conservative Party. Jagger's younger brother, Chris, is also a musician. The two have performed together. Although brought up to follow his father's career path, Jagger was always a singer, as he stated in According to the Rolling Stones. I always sang as a child. I was one of those kids who just liked to sing. Some kids sing in choirs, others like to show off in front of the mirror. I was in the church choir and I also loved listening to singers on the radio, the BBC, or Radio Luxembourg or watching them on TV and in the movies. In September 1950, Keith Richards and Jagger were classmates at Wentworth Primary School, Dartford. In 1954, Jagger passed the 11 plus and went to Dartford Grammar School, which now has the Mick Jagger Center installed within the school's site. Named after its most famous alumnus, Jagger and Richards lost contact with each other when they went to different schools, but after a chance encounter on Platform 2, at Dartford Railway Station in July 1960, resumed their friendship and discovered their shared love of rhythm and blues, which for Jagger had begun with Little Richard. Jagger left school in 1961 after obtaining seven O-levels and three A-levels. Jagger and Richards moved into a flat in Edith Grove in Chelsea, London, with a guitarist they had encountered named Brian Jones. While Richards and Jones planned to start their own rhythm and blues group, Jagger continued to study business as an undergraduate student at the London School of Economics, and had seriously considered becoming either a journalist or a politician, comparing the latter to a pop star. 1960s in their earliest days the members played for no money in the interval of Alexis Corner's gigs at a basement club opposite Ealing Broadway Tube Station. At the time, the group had very little equipment and needed to borrow Alexis' gear to play. This was before Andrew Lou Golden became their manager. The group's first appearance under the name The Roland Stones was at the Marquee Club in London a jazz club, on 12 July 1962. They would later change their name to the Rolling Stones, as it seemed more formal. Victor Bokras states that the band members included Jagger, Keith Richards, Brian Jones, Ian Stewart on piano, Dick Taylor on bass and Tony Chapman on drums. However, Richards states in Life that, the drummer that night was Mick Avery, not Tony Chapman. 
as history has mysteriously handed it down. Avery himself has categorically denied, on many occasions, that he played with the Rolling Stones that night. In fact, he only rehearsed twice with them in the Bricklayer's Arms pub before they became known as the Rolling Stones. Some time later the band went on their first tour in the United Kingdom. This was known as the Training Ground Tour, because it was a new experience for all of them. The lineup did not at the time include drummer Charlie Watts or bassist Bill Wyman. By 1963 they were finding their musical stride as well as popularity. By 1964 two unscientific opinion polls rated them as Britain's most popular group, even outranking the Beatles. By autumn 1963, Jagger had left the London School of Economics in favour of his promising musical career. With the Rolling Stones, the group continued to mine the works of American rhythm and blues artists such as Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley, but with the strong encouragement of Andrew Lou Goldham, Jagger and Richards soon began to write their own songs. This core songwriting partnership would flourish in time. One of their early compositions, As Tears Go By, was a song written for Marianne Faithful, a young singer Lou Goldham was promoting at the time for the Rolling Stones. The duo would write, The Last Time, the group's third number, one single in the UK based on, This May Be The Last Time, a traditional Negro spiritual song recorded by the Staple Singers in 1955. Another fruit of this collaboration was their first international hit, Satisfaction. It also established the Rolling Stones' image as defiant troublemakers in contrast to the Beatles' lovable mop-top image. Jagger told Stephen Schiff in a 1992 Vanity Fair profile, I wasn't trying to be rebellious in those days. I was just being me. I wasn't trying to push the edge of anything. I'm being me and ordinary, the guy from suburbia who sings in this band. But someone older might have thought it was just the most awful racket, the most terrible thing. And where are we going if this is music? But all those songs we sang were pretty tame, really. People didn't think they were. But I thought they were tame. The group released several successful albums, including December's Children, Aftermath and Between the Buttons. But in their personal lives their behavior was brought into question. In 1967, Jagger and Richards were arrested on drug charges and were given unusually harsh sentences, Jagger was sentenced to three months imprisonment for possession of four over-the-counter pet pills he had purchased in Italy. The traditionally conservative editor of the Times, William Rees-Mogg, wrote an article critical of the sentences, and on appeal Richard's sentence was overturned, and Jagger's was amended to a conditional discharge. However, the Rolling Stones continued to face legal battles for the next decade. 1970s In 1970 Jagger bought Stargroves, a manor house and estate in Hampshire. The Rolling Stones and several other bands recorded there using a mobile studio after Jonas death and their move in 1971 to the south of France as tax exiles, Jagger, and the rest of the band changed the look and style as the 1970s progressed. He also learned to play guitar and contributed guitar parts for certain songs on Dirty Work in 1986. For the Rolling Stones' highly publicized 1972 American tour, Jagger wore glam rock clothing and glittery makeup on stage. Later in the decade they ventured into genres like disco and punk. With the album Some Girls, their interest in the blues, however, had been made manifest in the 1972 album Exile on Main Street. His emotional singing on the gospel influence, Let It Loose, one of the album's tracks, has been described 
by music critic Russell Hall as having been Jagger's finest ever vocal achievement. After the band's acrimonious split with their second manager, Alan Klein, in 1971, Jagger took control of their business affairs after speaking with an up-and-coming frontman, J.B. Silver, and has managed them ever since in collaboration with his friend and colleague, Rupert Lowenstein, Mick Taylor, Brian Jonas' replacement, left the band in December 1974, and was replaced by Faces guitarist Ronnie Wood in 1975, who also operated as a mediator within the group, and between Jagger and Richards in particular. Attempt on Life in 1975, members of the Hells Angels attempted to murder Jagger. They were angered by Jagger having publicly blamed the Angels, who had been hired to provide security. At the Ultimate Free Concert in December 1969, for much of the crowd violence at the event, in which a young man, Meredith Hunter, was stabbed and beaten to death by several Angels. Three others died at the event, which was attended by roughly 350,000 people. The murder conspirators, it was reported many years later, had used a boat to approach a residence Jagger was staying at on New York's Long Island. The plot failed when the boat nearly sank in a storm and the plotters were forced to swim for their lives. 1980s while continuing to tour and release albums with the Rolling Stones, Jagger began a solo career. In 1985 he released his first solo album S.H.E.'s The Boss, produced by Niall Rogers and Bill Laswell, and featuring Herbie Hancock, Jeff Beck, Jan Hammer, Pete Townsend, and The Compass Point All Stars. It sold fairly well and the single, Just Another Night, was a top 10 hit. During this period, he collaborated with the Jacksons on the song, State of Shock, sharing lead vocals with Michael Jackson for his own personal contributions in the 1985 Live Aid multi-venue charity concert, he performed at Philadelphia's JFK Stadium. He did a duet with Tina Turner of It's Only Rock and Roll, and the performance was highlighted by Jagger tearing away Turner's skirt. He also did a cover of Dancing in the Street with David Bowie, who himself appeared at Wembley Stadium. The video was shown simultaneously on the screens of both Wembley and JFK stadiums. The song reached number one in the UK the same year. In 1987 he released his second solo album, Primitive Cool. While it failed to match the commercial success of his debut, it was critically well received. In 1988 he produced the songs, Glamour Boys and, Which Way, to America, on Living Colors album Vivid. Between 15 and 28 March he had a solo concert tour in Japan. 1990s Wandering Spirit was the third solo album by Jagger and was released in 1993. It would be his only solo album release of the 1990s. Jagger aimed to reintroduce himself as a solo artist in a musical climate vastly changed from that of his first two albums, S.H.E.'s The Boss and Primitive Cool. Following the successful comeback of the Rolling Stones' Steel Wheels, which saw the end of Jagger and Richard's well-publicized feud. After acquiring Rick Rubin as co-producer in January 1992, Jagger began recording the album in Los Angeles over seven months until September 1992. Recording simultaneously as Richard's was making main offender, Jagger would keep the celebrity guests to a minimum on Wandering Spirit only having Lenny Kravitz as a vocalist on his cover of Bill Withers, Use Me and bassist Flea, from Red Hot Chili Peppers on three tracks. Following the end of the Rolling Stones' Sony Music contract and their signing to Virgin Records, 
Jagger signed with Atlantic Records to distribute what would be his only album with the label. Released in February 1993, Wandering Spirit was commercially successful, reaching number 12 in the UK and number 11 in the US. 2000s Milan, Italy in 2003 and 2001 Jagger released Goddess in the Doorway spawning the hit single, Visions of Paradise. In the same year he also joined Keith Richards in the concert for New York City, a charity concert in response to the 11th of September attacks, to sing, Salt of the Earth, and, Miss You. He celebrated the Rolling Stones' 40th anniversary by touring with them on the year Long Licks tour in support of their career retrospective 40 Licks double album. In 2007, the Rolling Stones grossed $437 million on their A Bigger Bang tour, which got them into the current edition of Guinness World Records for the most lucrative music tour. Jagger has refused to say when the band will retire, stating in 2007, I'm sure the Rolling Stones will do more things and more records and more tours. We've got no plans to stop any of that really. In October 2009, Jagger and U2 performed Fergie and Will.I.Am and Stuck in a Moment You Can't Get Out Of at the 25th Anniversary Rock and Roll Hall of Fame concert. 2010s On the 20th of May 2011, Jagger announced the formation of a new supergroup, Super Heavy, which includes Dave Stewart, Joss Stone, Damian Marley and A.R. Rahman. Jagger has featured on Wall.I.Am's 2011 single, THE, in July 2013 it was officially released to iTunes on 4 February 2012. On 21 February 2012, Jagger, B.B. King, Buddy Guy and Jeff Beck, along with the Blues Ensemble, performed at the White House concert series before President Barack Obama. When Jagger held out a mic to him, Obama sang twice the line, Come on, baby don't you want to go, of the blues cover, Sweet Home Chicago, the blues anthem of Obama's hometown. Jagger hosted the season finale of Saturday Night Live on 19 and 20 May 2012, doing several comic skits and playing some of the Rolling Stones hits with Arcade Fire. Foo Fighters, and Jeff Beck. Jagger performed in 1-2-1-2-1-2, the concert for Sandy Relief, with the Rolling Stones on 12 December 2012. The Stones finally played the Glastonbury Festival in 2013, headlining on Saturday 29 June. This was followed by two concerts in London's Hyde Park as part of their 50th anniversary celebrations their first in the park since their famous 1969 performance. In 2013, Jagger teamed up with his brother Chris Jagger for two new duets to mark the 40th anniversary of Chris's debut album. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.